who's the market for buying shark? Who's buying? That's my next slide. Oh wait, that's a slide after this one, but I'll get there. So the uh, Bay Area is this hub for so many awesome things. This is a thing called the Gort Cloud which is the green Oort cloud. The Oort cloud is this thing that's around our solar system that protects us from uh, comets. And the Gort cloud is this green network of people that protects us as a green movement. So um, basically, if you're doing something cool and sustainable and uh, you know, systems thinking oriented, then people will get really excited and people will spread the word for you. Um, and so it's kind of like this free PR network and support network that we have around us. And the Bay Area is a huge epicenter for that. I mean, there's just from startups to schools to um, individuals to awesome companies like All Power Labs um, were in the heart or a heart of this sustainability movement. And likewise, there's about nine or more major biochar companies here in the Bay Area. So we're, we're pretty, and a lot of which are at, you know, production scale actually selling things. So there's Biocharm, which sells a blended, a blended product, Biochar Solutions, which sells uh, technology. They're based out of Colorado, but their CEO just moved to Oakland. Uh, Rechar is moving here soon. They've been working in Kenya uh, with farmers there. Phoenix Energy is producing a ton of Biochar right now. Um, they're in Merced. What's that? Only a ton? No, tons, tons, tons. <laughs> um, Pro Natura is a new compost company that just got excited about it. Full Circle Biochar, which has some really, really brilliant minds, um, are here and about to start selling, hopefully, something soon. Uh, and then Sonoma Compost, and then All Power Labs, if we tease them enough, are going to get back into the biochar. <laughs> you guys still have the biochar garden in the back. Yeah, yeah, there's a biochar garden here. And the back is on its way. Um, so yeah, so that's the Bay Area. So who buys biochar? This is from a marketing study I did um, in 2010. We looked at four different uh, potential markets here in the U.S. So nurseries and home gardens. Um, is about a $20 billion industry. 77% uh, of households have some sort of landscaping that they do. And uh, nurseries can put biochar right into their plants as they sell them and kind of create this you know, uh, higher marketed product there. The turf grass industry is really interesting. Turf grass um, comes with a, a soil medium on it and it it's usually has peat moss in it, which actually breaks down and um, uh, impedes the the grass from growing after a couple of years, so then you have to replace it. Uh, Biochar would be perfect for that. It would increase the water water nutri nutrient um, put, uh, retention capabilities. So there's a couple a couple companies and some research out of Iowa focusing specifically on turf grass. Green roofs have seen a 20% annual growth the last couple of mm -hmm. years. Um, people are getting really excited about urban soil solutions and vertical and um, and rooftop farming and uh, Biochar is, is great for green roofs. You don't have to replace it as often. Um, if ever it you know, has that remediation capability, it's lightweight. There's about seven different reasons why biochar for green roofs are awesome. And then finally, the soil and fertilizer companies is a $3 billion uh, industry with about 51% of that owned by Scott and Eric will grow. But um, <laughs> there's still a lot of potential there. And there's a couple of biochar companies working uh, with compost companies and other fertilizer companies um, getting into that. So, uh, what was the other thing there? Oh, I think it's DuPont. That's right. He's been doing some biochar trials, so oh, wow. there might be some, some big biochar stuff happening soon. Here's some of the pricing. Um, there's a huge variance in the price of biochar right now uh, because it's a new market and because it can be blended with so many different things and, and sold at so many different scales. Uh, we're seeing anywhere from $200 to $2,000 a ton, and there's outliers on either side of those as well. Um, but basically, raw biochar goes for less, and a blended um, product like uh, Soil Reef is doing right now, which has worm castings and compost on it, um, I think they're going for $50 for a $5 bucket. Um, but that's really, really, really rich uh, soil. So the cost of fertilizer, 
on the other hand, is about $250 to $500 per ton. Also outliers on either side of those. Uh, the cost of compost and organic fertilizers is much higher um, than the non-organic, and that's about $900 or $1,500 per ton. Uh, and then just to compare, the cost of coal, or if we, we use this as energy instead of as a soil um, amendment, is only about $10 or $80 per ton. So pricing. And I don't know how many of you have heard about biochar stoves, but that's how I got really excited um, we don't yeah. pay to move the, the screen up. The, the, we would need to prop to something here. Because we're looking around everybody's head. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. 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 There we go. That's the perfect. Great. So I got really into biochar um, <clears throat> through biochar stoves uh, with my background in international development, and I've been working here and there, volunteering with the Estufa Finca project, which is down in Costa Rica. That sea chart, Estufa Finca, the farm stove project. Um, and although it might be called something different now, so that might be a little long. Um, but Seachar has been working down there for a number of years now, and they have this kind of five gallon size stove um, and they are, they have a, their third pilot right now, and they have 100 stoves out, and they gave women the option of either buying the stove up front or paying for the stove with a biochar that they sell back. And 90% of women saw the value in the stove and actually bought the stove up front and are now still selling their biochar back. Um, a couple of them are using it in their own gardens, but um, it's a really cool project. If any of you guys have time to go down to Costa Rica, I would definitely recommend um, spending a couple months or more or your energy, time and energy here helping Art and that project out. It's, um, it's really fulfilling. So, yeah, they're working with a cacao cooperative down there who's using the biochar. So the Biochar Association of the Bay Area, um, this was launched uh, this fall. I was talking with a bunch of different businesses in the area and just realizing that um, we could be more efficient about the way we're working together to launch this industry um, in this epicenter of sustainability that is the Bay Area. So um, this is a working mission, but right now this is how it reads. Uh, the Biochar Association of the Bay Area will create a more sustainable world by promoting biochar. Uh, we're dedicated to building a thriving local biochar economy and catalyzing the birth and growth of this emblematic sustainable industry. Um, biochar is inherently a system solution because it solves so many problems uh, with one singular solution. And, um, and the people that are drawn to biochar come from a more car-centered place and I think we can show the world that industry can be run a little bit differently. Um, so growth and quarterly profit uh, oriented. So, um, so yeah, that's our mission. Our vision is that biochar will be a robust and exemplary sustainable industry by 2025, uh, with businesses, government, and civil society all working together to create closed loop agriculture and energy systems with biochar as the linchpin. Uh, and this is, you know, in the Bay Area, Bay Area and beyond. But we aim to be a uh, catalyst in, in China. And we, I mean everyone in this room who wants to, to join us. Um, this is a trim tabs or a Buckminster Fuller phrase that he used a lot. He said, call me trim tab. A trim tab is a rudder on a rudder uh, on a boat or a plane. It's kind of the, the point in the system where you can exert the least amount of pressure to move the whole system. So we've been thinking about what are those places in the Bay Area where we can exert the least amount of pressure and change everything. So the most efficient places basically to, to target. So in terms of education, who needs to know about biochar? We've identified these five different players. Investors obviously uh, need to be connected with the market statistics and the companies and, and gain more confidence in biochar. Um, grad students, I know very well now teaching and just having been a grad student, there's a lot of potential energy and excitement there that we can harness. Um, startups, there's so many startups coming out of the Bay Area, both in food and agriculture, biomass energy, forestry and land use, um, and I want to ensure that they know about biochar and build that into their model, not just as biochar producers potentially, but also biochar users. 
sustainability experts, um, ensuring that they know that biochar can, can close the loop on energy and, um, and biomass. And finally, uh, training of trainers, idea of, of targeting uh, educators, whether they're urban homesteading, educators, permaculture, K through 12, um, or you know, international groups, giving people the tools they need to be able to teach biochar. So those are our people we're focusing on. This came out of our kickoff meeting. We um, kind of did a survey of the room of the assets uh, that the biochar industry has, as well as the needs. So obviously there's huge potential. We have a lot of research on IP. Uh, it's a comprehensive solution. There's great people attracted to this industry and teams being formed. Uh, it's the right product for the right time. There's growing awareness. Um, it's the center of this food, energy, and climate um, space. And it inherently integrates human and natural resources. The needs are to scale to have more demos and to popularize biochar, to cultivate the technology, to have some early and easy wins, um, to make more profitable business models. Uh, and we're kind of in this chicken and egg situation where investors won't give us money because we don't have a market, but we don't have a market because investors won't give us money. So I'm trying to get over that. Uh, standardizing the morphology of the products, um, which is what IBI is working on. And finally, breaking down the market into approachable uh, pieces. So right now, there's a lot of companies that are like, everyone's our market. We're going to sell biochar to everyone. Um, and that can be kind of difficult for your customer to say, oh, I'm everyone. When you, if you kind of narrow, you can widen by narrowing by saying, this is our um, target um, customer. And uh, people can identify with that. Even if that's not necessarily them, they can identify with pieces of that, that target customer. What's that? Yeah, 99%. Exactly. Um, so yeah, so that's uh, a cool thing that happened in our, our kickoff meeting. And then we brainstormed and we came up with 10 different ideas of all the different programs we could do in this next phase, um, kind of before the conference this summer. And we came up, we put it out to vote to the people that were interested and the results just came in. We just made this decision yesterday to focus on a marketplace and market development. So a marketplace would be kind of like a dating service online for people who uh, have technology or have biochar or want to use biochar or want to sell biochar, but everyone can kind of come together and find each other um, and say what their needs are or kind of like a wants and haves section. Um, and this online port portal can be used for, like I said, users, retailers, producers, and other companies. Um, it can also serve as a clearinghouse for voluntary carbon offsets. There's um, a methodology that was developed that's not being used yet for biochar, and um, they're interested in letting us use it as a biochar association, which is very exciting. Um, Biochar has a unique carbon offset because it's actually putting carbon into the ground. Um, it has the, the potential for a double or triple offset, um, which is tricky, and the carbon market's very tricky, but uh, I think there's some potential there for creating more awareness and um, some funding for companies by uh, harnessing the potential of that market. So that's the marketplace. And the second program we'll be doing is market development. Um, so working with local businesses to develop a strategy um, that'll be kind of like a marketing toolkit, a uh, public relations campaign, and other programs, you know, going to events and tabling and all sorts of different things. Um, I'll be going to Rio Plus 20 Earth Summit this summer and representing the biochar industry there, which is exciting. And uh, yeah, so the, the idea is that pro programs will build curiosity and awareness in the market. Um, and it'll be kind of upstream from the market and acknowledge that it takes a lot of like lead generation for people to understand something that's so foreign and sounds too good to be true. Um, so yeah, we'll kind of work with people who have been in industry associations before and kind of done this stuff um, and create a strategy that'll help grow the industry. So anyone's interested in helping, it's gonna be a big project.